Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Talk About Random. This is Shar. Woo! This is Free. We're so excited today because I'm actually going to be talking about my favorite genre of movies slash TV shows, which is rom coms. <laughs> that completely interrupted my drum roll, but yes. So we're getting into Shar's own favorite genre today. Rom com. So she has prepared her own little spicy list to roast, to recommend, to review. And yeah, let's just get into it. <laughs> okay, so first I'm just gonna recommend some movies really quick. I actually suffered a lot while making the list because I feel like I just wanted to include everything. But you can. <laughs> but like, I literally told her she could and she refused. I feel like but... people would be tired after hearing me talk about like 24 hours of rom coms that I actually like. So <laughs> at the end, you could just like. List all of the ones that didn't make the cut. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually a brilliant idea. Yes. <laughs> so, anyways, the first movie I'm gonna recommend is My Best Friend's Wedding. To be honest, I kind of have a mixed feeling about this movie because the plot is really just trash. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> It's basically about a woman liking a man for like a long time. And then the man decided to get married, and the woman is trying to sabotage his wedding so that she could marry him. I mean, the plot is just trash, and then in reality, no one would like any aspect of the movie. However, Julia Roberts carried the show. And I stand <laughs> Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts.、She、carried it on her back. Yes. I ho- <laughs> her back aches. <laughs> yes. Fun fact Julia Roberts actually had to go to the hospital because she carried the whole movie. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were being serious. I was like, did she get, like, did she get hurt during the production? And it's like, no, she just carried the whole movie. <laughs> Anyways. Like, Julia Roberts is the probably the only thing good about the movie, and <laughs> I would rate it a 8 10 because of Julia Roberts. The second show I'm gonna talk about is Roman Holiday. Again, Roman, Roman, I, <laughs> not, not noodles, <laughs> ramen. <laughs> And by the way, everybody just go eat ramen because it's so good. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Or, If any ramen companies would like to give us a sponsor, <laughs> hit us up, email the description. Insert sponsorship here. <laughs> okay, continue. Anyways, we're back to Roman Holiday. Again, I kind of have mixed feelings because the plot is, again, just kind of cliche. It's okay, but like that one's iconic. And when I went to Italy, my parents were like, hey, they filmed Roman Holiday here. And I was like, oh, dang. <laughs> I mean, Audrey Hepburn is stunning. She is queen. Yeah, a queen, an icon. So、mm-hmm. basically, the plot is just、um, there's a, a journalist trying to dig up some dirt on a princess. And then pretends to be the princess's friend. And the princess actually fell in love with him and such. <laughs>、oh, <God. laughs> I mean,、um, it's just kind of like too predictable. But、mm. the ending scene was beautiful. And I'm glad they didn't make the princess <laughs> and the journalist have a happily ever after.、Mm. That would have been good.、Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs>、uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, it's probably not good for the couple, but at least from a movie perspective <laughs> and realistic perspective, it's good. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. And while we're talking about Audrey Hepburn, I think I'll also do a quick mention on Breakfast at Tiffany's. Oh my gosh. <laughs> also an iconic movie, and I、yeah. 10 out of 10 recommend it. Okay, the third movie I'm going to talk about is Jerry Maguire. Um, so, this is the movie where the utmost cheesy line came from You complete me. Oh! 
Oh. <laughs> it's not a traditional rom-com because it also focuses on Tom Cruise, which is the male lead's career, and how he builds up his like business empire. And ro- romance is only just like a small part of the movie. But mm-hmm. for Tom Cruise, I... <laughs> <laughs> our podcast is just turning into like people including guests just fangirling yeah this is my fangirl base and oh i'm God. sorry and the brand is just sitting here <laughs> staring at the screen being like save me oh no 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 i'm just kidding i don't mind at all <laughs> Keep going. anyway so this is basically in i think it's a sports manager tired of all the lies in the business so he tries to build up his like own company and then make a lot of money and be successful and then no one wanted to follow him but like the single female main character what do you know <laughs> like, plot how very original <laughs> rising action <laughs> Anyways, as I have said before, I probably would never watch this movie unless Tom Cruise. But like, it's Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm just kind of repeating myself and not making any sense. So you are. <laughs> so next one. <laughs> uh, okay. So um, the next one I'm actually going to talk about is a French movie called Amelie. It's basically about this quirky girl in a good way, in the best way possible, um, who fall in love with another quirky boy. I really like it because of the color palette. It's like warm yellow, beige. It's just sunny. And I also like the soundtrack. I mean, oh, it's very like... French feeling, if that makes any sense. Mm, interesting. <laughs> it's like this heartwarming fairy tale that actually happens in real life, and it makes so much sense. <laughs> foreign foreign girl's reaction to a non English language soundtrack. <laughs> oh, it makes me feel warm and sunny. No, I'm not. <laughs> but it does. <laughs> Uh, okay, I've never heard it, so mm-hmm. I can't say for myself. But I see where you're coming. I see where you're coming from. Well, one funny thing was when I was in like third grade or fourth grade, um, my mom <laughs> actually watched the movie, and I looked at the mm. poster. By the way, it's a very unflattering poster. It's basically just a scare, like a girl dead staring at you. And I thought it was a horror <laughs> movie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So I didn't watch it until I was in seventh grade, <laughs> but mm. I don't get fooled by the poster. I feel like the poster is probably like the biggest failure in the whole movie. <laughs> uh, they need to try harder. <laughs> oh, and I think Bree is actually going to talk about the next movie to all the boys I've loved before. Yes, so I actually did not get the chance to watch this movie because I have no <laughs> network subscriptions. But my one of my favorite actresses was in it. That's how I heard of it. Um, Anna Cathcart, I love you. <laughs> she's, she's amazing. But I'm turning into a fan girl now, come on. Okay, but um, I know it was based on a book and it got a lot of good reviews. Mm-hmm. So I would recommend you guys to watch it and maybe read the book too so you can make your own comparisons. And um, it's kind of basically the plot is this girl liked a couple guys, wrote letters to them, but then her little sister, well, on purpose, actually, not accidentally, she purposefully sent out all the letters to their respective owners (laughs) and that's how the plot unfolds. It's honestly a little bit new mm-hmm. in like the rom-com scene but yeah it sounds good <laughs> it sounds okay <laughs> but i can't confirm that because i've never seen it but yeah maybe you can go see it and tell me your opinions in the comments and we'll have a chat about whether i should <laughs> get a network subscription <laughs> or something like that but yeah by the way i would just like to thank my sister for not hacking into my gmail drafts and then send out all the stuff i wrote in there oh my god 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the next one is Runaway Bride. I think it's also Julia Roberts. So, <laughs> okay, so again, this starts with a journalist. Wait, a columnist working at a newspaper, and he's running out of inspiration. And then a friend just told him about a girl back at his hometown, who is like scared of commitment, and just basically runs away from every wedding. Like she had third weddings, and so <laughs> the journal, the、mm-hmm. columnist, like wrote a column, and then it was a hit. Like everyone knew about it. And then the girl is just so pissed, and then they sort of like had a like enemy to lovers relationship, if that makes sense. <laughs> and then it's just so fun to watch because I feel、mm. like well, it's not every time you see a woman with commitment issues, right? Oh my gosh! <laughs> True. I mean, it's always a playboy. I'm glad to see there's a playgirl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's it. What would you rate that?、Mm. I would say eight out of ten.、Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You're a little more critical than our previous. <laughs> Just kidding. We love you, Sasha. We love you. Please come back.、Yes. <laughs> We're still waiting for our like future episodes featuring you. Yeah. <laughs> Sneak peek. Okay. What's the next movie? Sure. Okay, so the last movie I'm gonna recommend is Miss Congeniality. So it's basically about FBI or CIA. I forgot what suspected that a terrorist is gonna bomb like the Miss American pa- pageant, and so they sent like the most masculine、um, female agent into like the pageant show for undercover. And it's just so fun、mm. to see like Sandra Bullock, which stars as the protagonist, just eating pizza、mm-hmm. while everyone is just working out. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of stereotypical, I admit, but it's still fun to watch. And to be honest,、oh、if everything needs to be politically correct, everything would probably be boring. So,、um, I seven out of ten recommend this movie because they just. Bombed the sequel. The sequel is just trash, and it doesn't、um, make any sense. It just went downhill. Yeah,、eh? it went down pretty fast, and I I can't believe I spent like two hours actually watching the sequel. Oh gosh, <laughs> you should have stopped when you had the chance. <laughs> I can't. It's okay.、Thinking. Now you have more to talk about, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> moving on to shows that I want to rush. Ooh. I I feel like this could get pretty controversial because I actually know a lot of people who genuinely like like the shows. But yeah, I looked at this list and it's like they're all pretty iconic, but Charlotte just does not think so. <laughs> so once again, disclaimer: these are all just our opinions, and feel free to tell us what you think in the comments. We haven't been getting many of those lately. <laughs> But yeah, we will gladly have a debate with you.、Yes. More, more like Charlotte. Charlotte would love to have a debate with you, and I will、um, stand on the sidelines, rooting and cheering. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm gonna be doing there, but yeah. So don't roast too hard because everyone has their own right to have their own opinion. Woo!、Okay. Freedom of thought.、Uh, start roasting. Okay, so the first show on my list is Love Actually. This is like an iconic show, like at least in China it is. So basically, it's actually this Christmas movie that focuses on different people's love stories in London. There are definitely like good stuff about the show. I mean, well, I can't really list any now that I think of it, but <laughs> <laughs> I think the problem with this film is that they try too hard. To like describe everyone's relationship, and then the storylines just get tangled together, and then it's so complicated that I can't even follow it. I mean, it's the kind of show that tries too hard 
to be good, but then fails. I can't really blame it because I know sometimes we're just all ambitious, but I, I just can't recommend it and say it's iconic. The second show I'm going to roast is Crazy Rich Asians. Oh um, my. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> this is going to hit hard. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I just like to clarify, clarify, clarify. That I'm not a racist, I'm actually Asian myself, and I fully support hashtag stop Asian hate. My whole roast mm-hmm. has nothing to do with um, racism or whatsoever. I'm just roasting mm-hmm. it on its plot, its like acting, its those bases. Okay, so mm-hmm. first of all, I think we need to talk about the author. So... To be honest, I don't think the author's books should be sold in mainstream bookstores. Because mm. it's basically just Cinderella and Prince Charming stories. I feel like I only saw his books in airport like bookstores. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the plot is pretty cliche. It's basically just Cinderella falls in love with Prince Charming. And then Pecklin just like has a bunch of outfits in her car trunk. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. That's me. That's totally me. <laughs> yeah. Um. The fashion of it, it's fine, but like I feel like it's kind of stereotyping, like rich Asians, because like I personally, I'm probably not not that rich enough, but I personally don't know anyone who actually lives a life like that. And mm-hmm. I actually, uh, I tried reading his books. I tried reading his sequel, which is My Rich Chinese Girlfriend. And I oh. felt offended. Mm-hmm. Well, like, mm-hmm. what does racing cars at 2 a.m. in Shanghai mean? Am I not living mm-hmm. in that neighborhood? It's, it's just illogical and it's too unrealistic. I feel like it's just like people imagining what rich life's supposed to be. Mm, so yeah. that said, the plot's kind of cliche and the acting is not that brilliant, to be honest. I feel like it's overrated because of its political correctness about Asian representation in Hollywood like industry. Okay, but Aquafina. Yeah, but <laughs> Aquafina. Yes, Aquafina. <laughs> that's, that's all I have to say, yeah. you know? Oh, uh, please support Aquafina, brilliant actress. She shouldn't be limited to just being a side character. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the last movie I'm gonna roast is The Notebook. Again, this is just a Cinderella story, except like the female and male like positions are actually switched. I read several of Nicholas Sparks's work. It's just too repetitive. He just uses like the same plot on every book he writes, and then you could just guess what happens next and what comes along. Oh, that gets annoying. Yeah, it's annoying and it gets boring at one point. Oh, and um, I would also like to mention like the female lead in the Notebook is actually um, Georgina in Mean Girls. I never oh. knew that. I thought they were two completely different person. People. Wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> what a small world. <laughs> but again, I get why people like the notebook. It has a lot of cheesy lines. If you're a bird, then I'm a bird. Uh, it's it's sweet, but. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, here I am staring at Charlotte next to a llama on my screen. <laughs> if you're a llama, I'm a llama. Oh god. <laughs> we stand llamas. We can confirm. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably start a llama section on my Pinterest board. But like <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> you can click the link in the description to find that. Okay, so finally, we're moving on to my love-hate movies. The first one is also kind of like iconic. It's Clueless. Here's what I think about Clueless. It's cute. It has like um, really, really pretty actress in it the fashion is really really good and i could definitely see some trends in 2021 trying to repeat what happened in the 90s but i feel like it's just an average teenage movie and 
I don't think it deserves to be like called iconic. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's about to be very controversial. I agree. It's a good movie, but it's just not as iconic as Roman Holiday or Breakfast at oh, Tiffany's. Um, you know, the standards are different. What would you rate it? Um, six out of ten. That's not bad. That's not that was bad. not bad. I was I was expecting something way lower. Well, the movie's <laughs> not bad either. It's just not as good as being called iconic. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the last movie I'm gonna mention in this episode is The Proposal. So it's basically about、um, the woman and a man has to fake marry for some kind of reason I forgot. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, what was the reason? Let me search it up for you. <laughs> I think the man married the woman for a promotion, but I forgot why the woman married the man. Anyways, it just says for a promotion on Google. <laughs> oh, Sandra Bullock is there. Yeah, again, with Ryan Reynolds. I I I love the cast, but I just don't get why they could produce such a mediocre movie with such a mediocre plot. And、mm. it's just mediocre. What makes it mediocre? The whole entire plot, like. the the man turning out to be actually super rich, and the woman turns out to be shocked, and then they actually fall in love, and it's just kind of cliche, and I'm just tired、mm. of it. But again, I like Sandra Bullock and Ryan Reynolds, and I watched the movie because of them. So, so what are your requirements? What are your standards for a non cliche movie? Ah,、oh, that's kind of like. Okay, so it just has to hit the spot. Yeah,、right? it has to hit the spot. I mean, you can't try too hard, if that makes any sense. And it has to be realistic. Yeah,、I、it、see. has to be realistic. It has to be like. I mean, um, playwriters. This might just be my opinion, but stop writing like your characters as rich or as poor or as normal. I mean. There are certainly like more relationship dynamics, dynamics like instead of those, and that's basically、mm-hmm. it. I mean, to stop writing、yeah. Prince Charming and Cinderella stories. <laughs> yeah. So this concludes our rom com genre episode, which was probably Charlotte's favorite.、Mm-hmm. We are well away into our film series, and we hope you guys are enjoying it. And yeah, I guess that's it. So please like, subscribe, and comment. <laughs> please comment. We need some opinions yes, please so we can like、me. have a good have a good debate with you guys. Yes, please roast me. Please, I would love to have a debate. She's not being sarcastic. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm, this is my most genuine thoughts. So we will see you next Saturday at 6 p.m. Thank you once again for watching or listening. <laughs> bye, guys. Bye, bye. <laughs>